Today we're talking the Adidas EQ21. Doing a comparison of the brand new shoe versus an older shoe. 25-ish miles on this shoe, a little over 200 on this. And how they break down, how they wear. Now, when it comes to running shoes and running in general, I don't think you should have to spend an arm and a leg on shoes and all the gear, equipment, and kit. So, if I can find a pair of shoes that isn't marketed and advertises heavily, so they're trying to make back some of that money, I'm going to try it. Because, again, Adidas is a known brand, reputable. And this shoe retails $80. Depending on the color, you can get it for $72. You find a sale on them, you get them for under $70. And that's a huge win. Adidas website or app, become a member. You don't even pay for shipping. So I got this pair for $60 at a Black Friday sale. This one was like $65 earlier in the year. So for that, I can't beat it when you're looking at most trainers nowadays being $120 to $180. And then these carbon plated racing flats, $200 to $400 or $200 to $300, depending on the shoe company. I think that's outrageous. And if you agree with me, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. It'd be appreciated. So just a quick overview of the shoe. Rubber across the entire bottom. Not Continental, not Vibram. But at the same time, based on this shoe with 200 plus miles, I don't see too much wear and I think it's got a lot more life in it. It does add weight to the shoe, yes. But weight isn't necessarily a bad thing if it's not really racing flat. So you can do add some weight, but it adds that durability. So you're getting more bang for your buck. So I think that's a huge win because otherwise that exposed EVA midsole type material, you usually wear through faster, assumingly you're running on either blacktop or a sidewalk. So that cement, that hard, just shreds through that, you're gonna wear through your shoe faster. So rubber across the bottom gives you that longer life. So Adidas is always known for their boost midsole. I've, I've run in probably four or five shoes with it. I like it, but at the same time, I always thought it was a little soft and I always thought it smelled. There's always an odor to it and I never enjoyed that. This is their new bounce midsole. It is a little firmer. It takes a little bit longer to, I think, break in, but at the same time, it doesn't have that odor. And it is, I still think, very comfortable. Breathable mesh upper. I've run in 30 degrees in this shoe today doing a half marathon. I've run in this shoe in late September hitting about 80 degrees. Foot was never hot in this. Foot wasn't cold today in this. So I can say kind of covers a good range of weather types. Um, if you're running in cold, wet weather or extremely cold weather, you might want to either get wool socks or they have a cold weather version of this, which is probably Gore-Tex, but I think that's going to cause your foot to get hot. So that's why I didn't get it. You have some soft plastic here, gives you a good heel or a good foot down lock. Standard tongue, no gusseted or burrito tongue, but I have yet to have any problems with it sliding side to side. Regular lace up and a real smooth heel collar here, which I think is great. Uh, today ran with no show shoot sock and I had no chafing, blistering, rubbing, irritation back here. So that's the shoe. Now for the first 15 to 20 miles, I will say the shoe feels very stiff, very rigid. Um, a lot of like snapping off the ground where you can hear yourself running and it was today on my run about mile three to four where all of a sudden this shoe just melted in my foot and then felt like i'm used to with this guy i don't know how to explain it but all of a sudden i didn't even realize i was wearing the shoe and to me that's a sign of a great shoe where you don't even know it's on your foot it's just there kind of protecting your foot from the ground so you're not destroying your feet on hard surfaces, small rocks, glass, whatever it is. So for me, that was fantastic. Again, this shoe wears incredibly well. I mean, this shoe having minimal miles, there's on the textured grip on the rubber, you can't even really tell that it's used. Um, I mean, obviously it's a darker shoe, so it looks clean, brand new there. But on the bottom, I'm sure it won't show too well but you actually see there's the textured grip along the majority of the rubber still. After it broke in, it did about the same thing with this. I couldn't remember the mile mark when it broke in, but this shoe has been fantastic for that length of time, if not more. Um, again, your things you're worried about when it comes to wear is any seam breaking, and I don't have any issues here where I have anything splitting or peeling. On the upper, lace locked down, everything's great there. Again, heel or the tongue doesn't slide. Heel still very soft. I don't know if you'd go with no socks just because of how the tongue would sit on top of your foot. Give it a try. Comment below. Let me know what you think if you go sockless. I prefer the sock. On the bottom or in the bottom here, 
Again, the rubber, having 200 miles, you're gonna have some smoother spots along the heel, along the forefoot here, and along the other outside of the heel, around the foot, and then where I run and land most of the time here. Smoother, but not aggressive wear. And then of course, your midsole. I'm getting a little bit of creasing along this colored strip here that's bent in, but otherwise, on the other side, I have no creasing at all. This shoe, I feel like I have 200 miles on it. I should be able to get another easily three to four. Um, I'm notorious for putting my shoes through way more miles than it's recommended, the 350 to 500, which is kind of standard. I've been putting, I would say, seven to eight, maybe 900 miles on a pair of shoes. My favorite pair of shoes of all time, I got a little over a thousand miles in. So I think that's kind of subjective on how you feel in this shoe. But I think this shoe is going to last a while. So for what you pay, what you get, the shoe is great. I recommend buying two because they're so fantastic at such a great price. Um, and once the Adidas 22 comes out, I definitely will be getting at least one pair of those to see if they haven't changed too much and how it goes from there. Well, hope you get out there, enjoy your run, and let me know what you think of this shoe if you get a pair.